And good morning, everyone, and welcome back. Uh, taking a look at 1 Corinthians 15 here as it relates to Jesus' second parable on the harvest, the parable of the tares and the wheat. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. This is what I call my morning musings. And thank you so much, by the way, for those of you who have been ordering my material, the 32, 32 lesson series on the parables, and then the 2006 Preterist Pilgrim Weekend on the eschatology of the parables of Jesus. I really appreciate those of you who are ordering that, and it helps a lot. Now, I made the comment over the last few lessons that Jesus' parables and the eschatology there is paradigmatic. It's foundational for the eschatology of the rest of the Bible. We cannot divorce the rest of the Bible's teaching on eschatology from the parables. And this is so significant. Notice, as I have demonstrated to you earlier, the parable of the harvest is would occur at the end of the age as foretold in Daniel. But Daniel's uh, prediction of the harvest at the end of the age, when the righteous would shine, would be fulfilled when the power of the holy people was completely shattered. Daniel chapter 12, verse 7. Okay, notice now that we have Daniel 12, Matthew chapter 13, time of the harvest, the coming of the Son of Man, at the end, the harvest, when the power of the holy people be completely shattered. Well, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, all right, no one doubts that it is about, quote, the end, the end of the age. We'll get to that momentarily. It is certainly about the harvest because Jesus, Paul says, twice is the first fruits of the harvest. Now, was Christ the first fruit of a different harvest from the harvest of Matthew chapter 13? And 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is at the coming of the Lord. So, you have Matthew 13, coming of the Lord, time of the harvest, at the end of the age. 1 Corinthians 15, Christ is risen from the dead, has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. As in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But each one in his own order. Christ, and I believe well to have a comma here, the first fruits, afterward, those who are Christ at his coming, then comes the end. So we have Matthew chapter 13, coming of the Son of Man, harvest, at the time of the end. Man, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, coming of the Son of Man, Christ the first fruit, Christ the first fruit, the time of the end. Matthew chapter 13, citing Daniel 12, would be fulfilled when the power of the holy people is completely shattered. Now watch this. This resurrection this resurrection harvest at the time of the end, at the coming of the Son of Man, would be when, quote, the law, which was the strength of sin, would be removed. The law, which was the strength of sin, was the old covenant law of Moses. As virtually everyone admits. Do you see the incredible harmony? Daniel chapter 12, harvest at the end of of the age when the power of the holy people, which was nothing other than the old covenant, her covenant with Israel. Matthew chapter 13, coming of the Son of Man at the time of the end, the harvest in fulfillment of Daniel 12. 1 Corinthians 15, the coming of the Son of Man, the harvest, the time of the end when the old covenant, the law of Moses, the strength of sin would be removed. Matthew 13 serves as the foundational source. In addition to the Old Covenant, of course, Daniel 12, Isaiah 25, Hosea 13, for 1 Corinthians 15, and they all agree, 
it was to occur at the end of the old covenant age in AD 70. Hey, don't forget, get my material on the parables. The 2006 Preterist Pilgrim Weekend, the eschatology of the parables of Jesus. The parables of Jesus, 32 lessons on the parables of Jesus. Go to my website, eschatology.org, bibleprophecy.com, order one or both, mention that you saw the offer on YouTube or Facebook, and I'll refund your shipping. Save you five bucks or ten if you were ordering individually. Thank you so much for joining me for this morning's Morning Musings. You have a fantastic weekend. Lord willing, we'll see you on Monday.